This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller drama film called You Get Me. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. High school student Tyler can't be more in love with his girlfriend, Allie. But for all his affections towards her, Tyler and Allie come from two different worlds. Tyler comes from a poor family, and he's usually tasked with babysitting his little sister when his mother isn't around. As for Allie, she's a rich gal who just moved to LA when she met him. One night, Tyler and his best friend Gil pick up Allie from her house to go to a party. The evening starts well as they are all just enjoying it until a guy who knows Allie suddenly appears. Allie seems to be avoiding her old friend but the guy intentionally approaches Tyler and reveals that Allie was a heavy partier who used to sleep around back then. As Tyler realizes that he doesn't know anything about his girlfriend's past, he gets humiliated. He immediately confronts her, asking if she ever slept with a guy. What annoys Tyler more is that he's never slept with Allie before. His questioning takes her aback. And as Ali misunderstands that all Tyler wants is to get in her pants, she breaks up with him. Tyler leaves the party, and he soon runs into an enticing girl named Holly. Holly invites him for a drive, and they end up partying and making out. The next morning, he wakes up in a huge house. Upon exiting the bedroom, he finds Holly looking at some Polaroid photos she took. Tyler spends the rest of the day with Holly, as though he's already forgotten about Allie. She shares that her father has passed away, and since her stepmother travels a lot, she's mostly left alone in the house. That night, the two of them make out again. But much to Holly's disappointment, Tyler refuses to stay over as his parents must be worried about him. He leaves, but not before telling Holly that the time he spent with her is special. With all that said and done, the moment Tyler gets home, he immediately texts Allie to talk. Come next morning, he meets her outside her house, and Allie apologizes for not telling him about her past. She explains that she didn't tell him about it since she was worried that he'd get weirded out. After admitting that they still love each other, the two make up and promise not to keep secrets anymore. Though Tyler agrees, he knows all too well that he'd broken the promise before he even made it. Still, he keeps Holly a secret out of fear that telling Allie about her will jeopardize their relationship. Time passes, and on the first day of school, Tyler sees a girl who resembles Holly while he's kissing his girlfriend. And much to his disappointment, his sister suspicion is confirmed when Holly is introduced as a new student in his class. Tyler can't keep a straight face as she sits beside him, telling him that her stepmother decided to stay in the area permanently. So now, Holly wanted to surprise him by transferring to his school. Of course, her sentiments do nothing to put Tyler at ease, and instead, he just asks her to keep what happened between them a secret. Looking like it's no big deal, Holly agrees to his request without question. But when break time rolls around, Tyler grows suspicious suspicious about Holly's real motives. She quickly befriends his best friend, Gil, and introduces herself to Allie and their other friend, Lydia. So to set the record straight, Tyler secretly meets with her after class, but without a second to waste, Holly jumps him as soon as she sees him in the halls to make out with him, like he's got honey on his mouth. Tyler doesn't appreciate her advances though, and pushes her away. He admits that what happened between them has no meaning, and hearing this pisses Holly off. She walks out on him, thinking that he just used her. The following days, Holly works on getting closer with Allie. She spends time with her at school, and goes with Allie to Tyler work, where she'd show them the photos she took. A photo of a topless guy catches Allie's attention, and she's especially curious since his face can't be seen. Tyler grows nervous upon seeing it because he knows it's him, and he knows full well what Holly is up to. Later on, they, along with Gil, are spending some time at the beach. Since Allie is still curious about the guy, Holly talks about how she met him, from the partying to making out, all without mentioning who he is, and to demonstrate it properly. She unexpectedly comes up to Gil and kisses him, while eyeing Tyler the entire time. Later that day, Tyler drives them home, only to feel his anxiousness spike as Allie informs him that Holly's staying over at her place for some girl talk. That night in Allie's bedroom, Holly spots Allie's photo with Tyler and starts asking about their relationship. When Allie shares that they haven't slept together since they're taking things slow, Holly says that she respects it. Meanwhile, Tyler confesses to Gil that he ended up sleeping with Holly when he and Allie had a fight. Now, he's convinced that she's just messing with him. But since Gil is already attracted to Holly at this point, he disagrees with him, saying that it's just his Gil talking. The next morning, Holly leaves without waking Allie up. She goes straight to Tyler's house while she's wearing Allie's clothes, surprising him. 
He freaks out even more when Holly starts saying that she told Allie the truth. But she quickly admits that she's just lying, saying that Tyler is not the only one who can lie. At school, Tyler overhears Holly's stepmother asking a teacher about her behavior. As she's leaving, Tyler approaches her to inquire how Holly is coping with the new environment, which is a subtle way of probing at the girl's true intentions. While the woman is telling him that Holly's a good girl, Tyler suddenly cuts her off, saying that she can be quite absurd. Obsessive. The woman is taken aback and denies what he said, claiming that Holly can just be lonely sometimes. Meanwhile, Lydia muses that she finds Holly strange because there is no information about her online. Allie defends her new friend, and unbeknownst to them, said friend is listening in on their conversation. Later on, Holly gives them some drinks, and when Lydia drinks hers, her body suddenly stiffens. After a bout of twitching and writhing, she eventually passes out. Allie panics and starts crying for help, exclaiming that her friend's having an allergy attack the entire time. Holly's just sitting there, wholly unbothered. Tyler soon witnesses Lydia being carried by the medics, and he finds himself both nervous and frightened as he suspects Holly to be the culprit behind the incident. Tyler attempts to message Gil and Allie about his suspicions, but just as he's deciding against it, he suddenly feels someone inside his house. He slowly heads outside, and much to his relief, there's no one there. When he turns around, however, Tyler is now face to face with Holly, who quickly stabs him. And with that, Tyler wakes up from his terrible nightmare. Meanwhile, Holly is having a conversation with her stepmother, and it's revealed that she's been missing her therapy appointments and that she refuses to take her medication. Holly claims that the pills numb her, and she even threatens that she'll die if she can't feel love. The extent of her obsession with Tyler also unravels through his photos that she's all but enshrined him within her house. At school, Tyler's in for the shock of his life when Allie informs him that Holly's pregnant and since the guy responsible is missing in action, she needs to be there for her. Sure enough, Allie's being a good friend to Holly and spends time with her. One time, while they're in the pool at Holly's place, Holly suddenly asks her what she's going to do if it were her and Tyler's baby. Allie answers that she doesn't know and when she asks what Tyler's parents think about their relationship, Allie admits that she's never met his parents yet since they are always working. The following day at Tyler's place, he wakes up to the sound of his sister talking to someone. Of course, it's none other than Holly, and he's extremely irritated to see her trying to get close to his sister. And seeing that Holly's already successfully charmed the girl, he drags her out of the house. Finally confronting her, he outright tells Holly that he can't support her or the baby. Holly starts pleading with Tyler, telling him that all she wants is to be with him. She even claims that she knows Tyler loves her and that Allie's just in the way. But Tyler pops her bubble right there, admitting harshly that Holly was just a mistake. Despite his rejection, Holly refuses to give up and tries to stop him from leaving. He accidentally elbows her, pushing her to the ground and infuriating the already scorned girl. Following the incident, Holly rushes to Allie and sobs, pretending to be the victim and claiming that the man who impregnated her had hit her. Here, she would also tell Allie that she hadn't been completely honest with her the entire time. Meanwhile, Tyler visits Lydia in the hospital to ask whether she thinks that the allergy attack was an accident. Lydia says that she and Allie drank the same smoothie all the time, but it was only when Holly got it for them did she have an allergy allergy attack. Hearing this, Tyler finally confesses the truth about him and Holly to her and he promises that he's going to tell Allie. The following day, Tyler meets Allie by the beach. But before he could come clean, Allie says she already knows about him and Holly. She saw the photos of him sleeping with her and staying at her house. And though Tyler tries to justify this by saying that they were broken up at that time, Allie refuses to listen to him and walks out. With Holly bombarding him with messages, Tyler completely ignores her until they meet at school. But this is when the dean calls for Tyler, indefinitely suspending him because Elizabeth Holly Viola reported that he attacked her. Tyler is taken aback by this, and as soon as he gets home, he looks up Elizabeth Viola online. There, he discovers several assault cases against Holly and her release from a mental institution. 
A threatening message from Holly soon pops up, ominously telling him that since he knows about her now, he should have an idea of what she's going to do next. That night, Allie is left alone in her house, where she eventually feels that someone has intruded. She hears the sound of something breaking, and despite her growing fears, she slowly walks forward. This is when a stranger abruptly attacks her from behind. Later on, Tyler receives photos of an unconscious tied up Allie. He immediately calls Gil for help and he's sure that Holly's behind all this. When Allie regains consciousness, she finds herself tied to a chair in Holly's house. Holly reveals that she's just using her to get what she wants and that she lied about the baby. Even after everything that happened, Holly's still knee deep in her delusions. She fully believes that Tyler loves her and forces Allie to give him up. Moments later, Holly notices that someone's coming, so she quickly covers Allie's mouth before leaving her. Her stepmother comes into view and as soon as she sees Allie, she immediately assists her. But while she's trying to loosen the ties, Holly wraps a plastic bag around her stepmother's head until she's unable to breathe. Tyler makes his arrival and finds Allie's clothes stained with blood. He then sees Holly sitting on the floor in the living room while looking at her Polaroids, which is the exact same position she had when Tyler first woke up in her house. Holly goes on about how she loves to replay their weekend getaway in her mind over and over again. But Tyler has no time for her crap and instead looks for Allie in every room to no avail. He goes back to the living room and as he's demanding to see Allie, he notices blood beginning to drip on his face. To Tyler's sheer horror, Allie is hanging on the ceiling with her forehead bleeding. Without a second to waste, Tyler puts her down and while he's doing so, Holly disappears. After waking Allie up, he takes a fire poker with him before trying to escape. But as they're heading out, they're greeted by the terrifying sight of Holly's lifeless stepmother. They manage to get out of the house, but Holly catches up and points a gun at them. Tyler begs her not to hurt Allie and takes all the blame for everything that's happened. Holly admits that she was supposed to let Allie live, but since she's always getting in her way, she's beginning to have second thoughts. While Holly's deciding on who she's going to kill, Gil suddenly arrives, calling out her name. This prompts her to pull the trigger, and though she was aiming for Allie, she ends up hitting Tyler on the shoulder. Holly hurriedly fires at Gil, so Allie uses the opportunity to pick up the fire poker and stab her, causing Holly to fall on the swimming pool. But in the end, Holly survives everything, and when a paramedic assures her that she's going to be okay, she grabs onto his arm, making him promise that he won't leave her. The paramedic tells her, I got you, and the sinister look crosses Holly's face. Face. As for Tyler, he is later seen celebrating his sister's birthday, surrounded by Allie and all their other friends. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.